something really important right now based on our average sale price going up, based on uh, lead conversion, based on the market shifting. I think it's kind of important for us to really talk about. Um, and I've talked about it before, but it comes down to the whole thing, the Holy Grail. Hey, this is Blake Sloan. I've been selling real estate over 14 years. Our team of highly trained professionals along with our unmatched marketing has sold thousands of homes here in the Myrtle Beach area, and this is how we do it. What's Holy Grail, you guys? Remember, what's Holy Grail? Lifetime value is the dollar amount that that client has a value to you that you can actually calculate, that you can understand that, hey, this client is worth X amount of dollars to me, right? And I understand that and I can measure that and I can really be aware of that. Does that make sense in that scenario? And it's very powerful, but most people in business don't understand this. They don't really understand to, to move. If I don't know the number, how to calculate the number, I don't really understand how to make that person better. I went to a restaurant in Mexico uh, called Bagatelle. Anybody heard of Bagatelle before? Very, very high-end like restaurant. It turns into a club there in San Tropez, all these places. You type in the name, you can't get in without typing your name. I looked at the screen, guess what it has? The dollar amount you've ever spent at any of their companies or their locations and the average amount you spend when you walk in that door every single time. Okay. Think they don't take good care of you? If they know what you're doing, right? It's very, very important to have and understand the lifetime value of this uh, and what that is. And so that's one of those things that you've got to really understand, like what's my client lifetime value? And so why does that really matter a lot? Because you want to understand the value of my, li my lifetime of my client through repeat purchases, referrals. That's where the lifeblood is because why? Why is that important? Yes. Roughly what? 80%. 80%. Why? They're pre-sold on you. So someone's pre-sold on you in terms of, hey, look, you use Matt. Matt's the best one. He's the guy. He's my guy at Myrtle Beach. They're more likely not to interview other people and more likely to stay with that person because of them being referred. Versus an online web lead where 2 to 4% in the industry is excellent. The absolute best is 2 to 4%. So the amount of work and time and energy to convert that person is so much higher for a web lead, but agents tend to do one thing they think very transactional, meaning that they just hunt, hunt, hunt because they can't plant the seed for a long-term lifetime value. Lifetime value takes more time to do. Why is that? Because you got to plant the seed, water the seed, nurture the seed, and eventually it comes up. But what most people do, they don't understand how to measure it and what it is and really see the value in what they do. And so today I really want to talk about a few things. I really said, hey, I used to teach on this big 20 page thing we used to have about it, but I really broke it down to a matrix for you guys to help and understand. But I really wanted to break down the mathematics of understand, hey, look, not only this, but here's the crazier part about this 80%. Guess which types of leads like to work more referrals? High end, why? They always got a guy. Their guards up, they're more methodical in what they do, right? They're more, they're more so into, um, making sure that they want to use somebody else who's experienced in the high end. That's why you see you have one agent who lives in a neighborhood who all of a sudden gets seven, eight, nine luxury deals in a neighborhood, right? Their husband or, or wife, whoever it is, you know, had a relationship in there and they have, you know, it's a little bit of money and all of a sudden they break in and they're an absolute idiot on the real estate field, but they're getting all these high end stuff. Why? Because those two like to work by referral. And so for me to understand that game, I had to play that game in a way to win that. And that's very, very important for us to look and understand going forward. So I want to talk about, you know, us, and this really helped us as average sale price got right now, average sale price, let's just say simply 250,000. Uh, I think we're above that a little bit now, but it keeps the mathematics simple. Right? Lifetime value is what again? The amount that this client is. It's literally the dollar amount that they're worth to you over a certain period of time. In this example, we'd use 20 years. Why is that? It's an average great uh, time to look at from a career standpoint. And it keeps the numbers simple. I've already been 17 years, right? So it's important for us to understand that. And we're gonna break down the psychology of how do you maximize the lifetime value? And it's something that no one else does in real estate hardly. But in the reality, our presentation charts, everything we do has been built on this model here and I really haven't talked about it enough. And so that's why I want to break it down again today in terms of that, right? So look at the overall process. Have initial transaction, we'll call it IT. Average sale price, 250,000. How much of my money? 7,500 bucks, right? That's the key part there. 
Average person moves how much? Every seven years, right? Just ask them, NAR, National Association of Realtors, seven year, extra what? 7,500 bucks. And this is assuming that prices do not go up. Uh, you're not going to see a big change, but you will see that point too. Break the nine numbers. It's important for you guys to visualize, understand it, right? So let's say what, what happens to move? They have kids, they downsize, they upsize. They do all kinds of different things. They want a different neighborhood. They want to move to a different area, whatever it is. It's very important for us to understand that, right? So you're seven. 7,500. You're 14. What do we got? 7,500. And we'll go to the last one. You're 21, right in that range. Another 7,500. How much is that? Was it? If you had the whole thing, the initial one, you're at 30, right? So you're at $30,000. That one client. That makes sense there? So that's important for us to understand that piece. Not a big deal. Where's the money come from? For understanding lifetime value of a client, where's the money come from? What's that? The people they tell about you, right? That's where the money's at. And we're missing this on both sides a lot. I notice this because we're missing small details when we close out deals. You have clients who opt out globally from your communication at the end. I saw four of those last week in our deals. And what it told me and why I need to teach this today is we have four people who have clients who opt out of all communication with them means that you're not going to get what? Very likely. Referrals. They may have liked you. They just didn't understand the process and why they need to continue to get communication from you on a daily or weekly basis. Does that make sense? And so here's the crazy part. This is a national stat too. I have all kinds of uh, PowerPoints and stuff that show the real stuff, but I just want to break it down here. The average person knows 4.3 people a year that move. Ideally, right? That's people they come across, they know, friends, relatives, sphere, whatever it is that overall moving for the average person. Okay, that's not counting like stuff you see on Facebook or things like that. That's people they personally know in that scenario what that is. So that's something that's super important there from that piece. What's my goal here? Question? Yes. And I can't remember who did that study, somebody with NAR that had that. So what's my goal here? That means they got one, two, three, four people that they know. My goal is to do what? Let me just get one. Is that doable, you think? Do you think it's doable that if I have a client who loves me and likes me, that they know four people that I can get them to at least refer one person to me? At least to reach out to me. Right? And this is true on the seller side too. We're missing a lot of re referrals on the seller side right now too. We're selling them, listing their home, never talking to them again. Right? So we got to make sure that we're maximizing this on both pieces. So 4.3, I just need to get one. Is that believable, doable? 100%, right? So now look at my lifetime value 20 years. What's that for me? That's 7,500. 7, Oops. 7,500 times what? times 20. The person knows 4.3 people a year that move, I want to get just one of those four every year. That's called a one-to-one -one ratio. You guys with me on? This is when the math starts to get crazy. This shit starts to get very interesting. So I have 7,500, 7,500, 7,500, and everybody agrees if you have a client that likes you, they know 4.3 people a year, statistically, that you can get one. If you play the cards right, you agree? If you stay in communication, you do these things, all these things in that scenario, What's that come down to? $150,000 overall, just in what? Referral. So it comes down to what? $180,000 for that client. So ideally, what would your business look like if you could say, look, I have a, an average client worth is $180,000 for that client. Does that make the communication a little more important? Some of the agents here did 50, 60 deals, right? A lot of the people who did good did 40 to 60 last year. That's 40 to 60. In two years, you have 100 people. You guys with me on this? In two years. And that's what our whole business is built on that. And that's what a chart has in there, the thing about lifetime value and their real estate resource for life. I'm pre-framing them on me being able to work with them and be their resource for everything.
Does that make sense? Now, let's say I get to 100 past clients that send me their referrals and they repeat their repeat purchase every seven years. What's that worth? I'm going to help you out real quick. Over a 20-year period, $18 million. 100 clients, $18 million. Not counting inflation, numbers going up, things like that. And that's where the holy grail is because most people miss it. There's another NAR study that shows that 90% of people would use their realtor again in many cases and they, they got their, their uh, survey, which I think is kind of high. Less than 10% actually do. Why? What's the reason here based on this? Here's where it is. They can't connect the gap between year one and year seven. By the time year seven comes around, guess what happens? They don't even know their name. Bought a year ago, two years ago, six months ago, right? They don't know their name. And so what it shows is the agents, our industry cannot make the gap here between year one and year seven. And so what we got to do is get very, very good at that. And that's what we try to work on in that piece. But I want you to understand the value of this if you break it down. Ideally, so if you take 18 million, if you can get to that point, right, and break that down of the 20-year period, guess what that equals? 900 thousand dollars a year in commissions just 100 people with a one-to-one -one ratio if i can be good enough and communicate my clients good enough and follow back up with them that's a one-to-one -one ratio this is where the big time money is going forward especially in any type of market shift you want advocates and what we call champions in our crm that's why there's a champion there that's somebody who's bought from you sent referrals and bought investment property from you which we've done that with many people. Massive, massive opportunity. Understand this if you can, guys can really do it. And I can't get people to fill out the friggin' email or the e-alert setup. And it, uh, it's really, really important for you guys to understand the metrics and numbers here. I take that same amount, right? Guess what that amount equals? Monthly. Help you out. $75,000 a month. You guys be okay with that? No. All right? Not too bad, some people can't. Huh. $75,000 a month, would that help life out a little bit? Take some stress off, like do things you wanna do. And here's the crazy part, you don't have to make hundreds and hundreds of dollars, why? You have 100 clients who send you one deal a year. And that's why when you start training, have that question, it's on our 360 site, what, could, what would life look like if you woke up every January 1st, had 100 people who sent you one deal a year? That's it, and that's all you have to get to both on the buy side and the seller side. It's very, very important. It's important for you to know and know who your actual high-end clients are. That's why that restaurant, that, that club, Bagatelle, knows exactly how much that person spent over a lifetime with their client. They know they're gonna take better care of certain ones because guess what? Some are really, really big spenders. Big time, like $30,000, dollars $100,000 a night spenders. And so they're gonna take care, extra care of them, follow back up with them, try to do what? get them back in there. And so one, we got to know who they are. Number two, we got to get to where you can be to a one-to-one -one ratio from all your people and be very, very purposeful about it. Keep going with this, right? Ideally in that standpoint. That's another $18,000. I think it's 18 something. $18,750 a week. You guys live all that? $18,000 a week. They'll pay a lot of bills, buy a lot of stuff, buy a lot of cars, buy a lot of investment properties. Probably make life a lot easier for somebody in your family. Pay a lot of college tuitions, right? A lot of stuff, and very, very, very important with that. I had a daily one here somewhere, but either way, there it goes. $3,750 a day. Which comes down to an hourly wage of 468.75. So if you look at this, the highest dollar productive activity you can possibly do in this business is what? With who? Your past clients. There's nothing more valuable. For some reason, we like to skip over it and skip over it and chase some web lead who I can't get to answer the phone over and over and over and over. 
Why do they tend to do that? You mentioned this for yourself. You mentioned about yourself. That's why I'm getting it. Mistakes, but uh, a lot of times they they liked me and wanted to use me again. I was just afraid to call. I felt like I didn't do that good of a job. But I mean, that's not how they felt. They didn't feel that way at all. Yeah. And when you started calling, what did they do? I mean, talk to me. Give me referrals. They were very happy, very nice, yeah. to send referrals, right? And so I want to share this with you because where are you making this? $18 million mistake, right? This $75,000 a month mistake by not being purposeful in your past clients for a one-to-one -one ratio. My goal here is to help you build a business that can get to a one-to-one -one ratio with 100 past clients, period. And there's different pieces of this and through different coaching groups and things I've been through, different mentors before, one guy really helped build out this and the problem is no one really sticks to it. And I can't figure out why. Because it's so, 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 so easy. The referral volume is much higher in terms of average sale price. And the, the people are just much easier to deal with. They like you. They're pre-sold on. You don't have to do as much pre, you know, presenting. They're not going to screw you, go behind your back as much. They're much, much better people to work with. And so I want you all to make sure that you've got to be very, very purposeful about doing the $500 an hour stuff here that you can break down and do that. But it takes making a decision. A decision today that, hey, look, every single client I get, I've got to understand one thing about them. I've got to find a way to understand and maximize my lifetime value and be obsessed with it. So we're dropping the ball over. And that's why when I get so angry on a Friday and I see that somebody globally opted out of email and you have no notes in there, guess what that shows me? You just wasted 180 grand on that person. Because I can't market to them for you. That's why I want two emails at the end. That's why I want to understand their actual real address. Because I understand that you have this ability here. That person is worth $180,000 total. And that's if they don't buy any investment properties. If they buy two investment properties, I think they're up to one ninety five, dollars Which changes the whole game. And so very, very, very important for us to understand that i got to make sure I'm very purposeful about doing this. And there's a method to it. Why? Because we're all humans and we all deal with psychology and we all think and operate the same exact way. Does that make sense to you all? You follow me on this? And so I've taught this over and over and over. But I want you to look, look, how much money am I leaving on the table? By not doing this $500 an hour work and being very purposeful about it, meaning call my clients like crazy, follow back up with them, send them things, get the information on it. That's why I get really angry about not having notes or anything about in the hug field because now I know you're not really calling them or can't call them. Or if you do call them, you don't have anything to talk about. 